Well, welcome. Um, those of y'all who are in the back, if y'all want to come come in, there's plenty of room. That's right. The mayor said to pretend it's raining. So. Let me, uh, to, to start us off today, let's all stand and uh, begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sure, no problem. Let me uh, open us with a word of prayer, and then we'll get started this morning. Dear Father, our God, we just praise you for this day, for the beauty of your creation, for this uh, land that we get to stand on. Lord, I just uh, thank you for the opportunity we have to um, set aside just a few minutes this morning um, to honor those men and women who serve serve our community, who volunteer their time and who spend their days working to serve their neighbors. Lord, I just uh, thank you for uh, EMS and fire and law enforcement and all of those who who give of their days um, for others. Lord, I thank you for the men and women who will build this building and for those who will serve in it for many years to come. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody here. My name is Mac Purdy, Emergency Management Director, and um, my job this morning is really just to um, move us through this groundbreaking ceremony um, and introduce a few people to you. But before we get started, um, and as kind of a way of introduction, um, I need to take just a second and tell you how I got here. Um, I, I'm told that 49 years ago, uh, a group of our neighbors got together uh, as part of a boat club and CB club and decided that there was a need in our community, um, a need for a group of people to serve their neighbors as volunteer firefighters and um, rescue professionals. Um, so in 2016 will be 50 years of celebration of the Williams County Rescue Squad. Um, I think this project's been going on for two or three, maybe dreamed about even longer than that, years. Um, it, it wasn't intentional that I think it'll be opening up in the 50th year of the Rescue Squad, but um, I don't think that's an accident. In, uh, I guess in high school, I had two encounters um, with different people, with different volunteers. One was an older scout in my scout troop, a guy named Steve Shear, who went on to be a, a full-time firefighter in Brentwood and Franklin for a little while, and the other was a captain on the rescue squad, Tim Neal, who uh, over and over again seemed to fix our old fuel oil furnace. Um, both of them introduce me to the rescue squad and so when I went to college at 18 I had the opportunity to to join the rescue squad and be a part of the men and women who serve um, and so I guess I need to take a minute and say thank you um, to those of you who I know were on the rescue squad then or are still on it now because I wouldn't be where I am today uh, without that opportunity it gave me a foundation um, that I still rely on today. I'd like to begin by um, telling you one thing about this this facility. This is uh, the the goal of this facility is really um, to be a hub for the rescue squad, um, kind of on the south side of Franklin. Um, as the rescue squad continues to grow, there's seven <coughs> stations today, um, and this will be number eight. Um, in this facility will be shared space for the rescue squad, for uh, EMS, our emergency medical service, and an office um, for the sheriff's department. So with that, um, I'd like to begin today by introducing the EMS director, Alan Lovett. Thank you, Mike. Uh, 
kind of follow along with something that Max story on the rescue squad when I was 16 years old my mom signed for me to be a volunteer with the squad and uh, through my membership with the squad it was where I received my first aid my initial first aid training and uh, vehicle rescue courses and from that I developed an interest in emergency medical service and progressed on through and I've, I've been with EMS for 32 years next month um, this is a tremendous day. It's a long time coming. I'm very grateful to uh, the county mayor, uh, to the county commissioners, and to the cooperation of continually improving our public safety with all of our uh, responding partners. And I am grateful to be at yet another landmark day. Uh, and there you are, Bill. Thank you for all you've done for the past few years to make this happen. I don't know that uh, Chief Bowman remembers this, but when you join the rescue squad, you take an agility test, and I think it's changed a little bit from mine, but um, I got to go to a, a station in Hillsboro, um, and uh, my agility test, we had to climb on the roof of the school, and I don't really like heights, just so you know, and I'm pretty sure that um, Chief Bowman got me up and down the ladder and then they black out your face mask and make you crawl around in the dark and I feel like he left me crawling around in the dark for a really long time I'm not sure if he was picking on me or not but uh, Chief of the Rescue Squad, Chief Todd Bowman Good morning everybody, I don't know how you uh follow up on that kind of introduction there but uh, we are looking forward to this uh, from where we came from to this is going to be sort of like the same thing as Neil Armstrong said one small step for man and one big step for mankind uh, and we hope that the working relationship that we've had with the county government and especially with Director Jorgensen that they've got the public safety uh, Mayor Harrison has always been behind the squad, and we just look forward to getting into this new building and help serve the people in the community. Thank y'all. You know, this, this facility is for the community, and it's served by members of the community, both those paid and volunteer professionals, um, but it, it wouldn't be possible without um, the other leaders in our community that um, take on that responsibility of figuring out um, how to lead and fund and deal with the growth and the great things of Williamson County. Um, I'd like to introduce Chairman of the County Commission, Mr. Jack Wall. I'll stand on my tiptoes. Uh, back, thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce several of the commissioners here. Commissioner Paul Webb, uh, if you'll stand up. Uh, former Commissioner Cheryl Wilson and former Commissioner Judy Hayes. Uh, and I apologize if I missed someone. Uh, oh, Betsy Hester, I'm sorry. Hiding behind the sheriff. There you go. Uh, w welcome, everybody. This, as it's been said, this is a long time coming. Uh, we dig today for the growth of tomorrow, and uh, th this this facility will help the south end of the county. Uh, with the 840 coming in, the sheriff keeps telling me all the issues we're having there, and this will help that. Uh, we're so honored to be here and, and can't wait for the ribbon cutting to see this fine facility. Again, thank you for coming, and uh, we, we appreciate your support. and. Look forward to great things to come. Thank you. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Bill Jorgensen. I'm the public safety director for Williamson County, for those that don't know me. And I do see um, people here from the community, and that's probably... I had, I had so many things I could talk about. I could talk about my history with the rescue squad and how that got me started in emergency services and where I'm at now and uh, the many years and my agility tests that I went through and all that. But um, there's two things I wanted to talk about this morning. One is community. And 
as I look around here and I've met some of the um, people from the community, and especially, uh, and I can't remember Joy's last name. Where is Joy? Did she? Oh, there she is right there. She lives right across the street. We've already communicated a couple months ago, and the only thing she asked was, please keep the trees where they're at. So, when you look at this rendering, I just want you all to know that it doesn't show the trees, but the trees are staying, except for the uh, egress and ingress uh, out of the facility. So, um, And I promise we'll be good neighbors. I promise you that. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about were the... Uh, volunteers and this is just one more step and many steps we're taking with the uh, volunteer fire service in Williamson County. I know um, we feel that the most important thing is to build a system around the volunteers. The volunteers are the core of the fire system in Williamson County and we feel the county feels that the volunteers will be the core of that system as far as we can see. As long as we can see, and we're doing planning way out, uh, long range planning, and we see volunteers being the core of that system uh, for a long time and with the county supporting that, just as we're doing today with this facility and supporting those volunteers. As Mac mentioned, um, there are other um, um, public safety users that will be in this facility, such as the sheriff in EMS. So I'd like to introduce our sheriff, uh, Sheriff Jeff Long. Thank you, Bill. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to say what a very important day this is for the first responder systems of Tennessee, or Williams County in particular. I want to congratulate Mayor Anderson, the county commission, and Bill Jorgensen for their foresight to make plans that our emergency response to calls in this portion of the county is protected. Most people are not concerned about a uh, first response until their family or the victims of a medical crisis and need an ambulance. Their house is on fire and need a fire department. They have a lost member of their family and a gas leak and need MA. Or they have someone breaking into their home and they need the deputies of the Williamson County Sheriff's Office. Williamson County will be at the forefront in providing that protection to our citizens in this portion of the county. This is going to be a great response for the I-65 and Highway 840 corridor, two of the highest percentage areas in our county now for requiring service. Also, I'm a little bit prejudiced because I live in the community and I'm glad we've got this as close as we do in, in the community. As you travel on I-65 and around 840, I ask you to look at the tremendous growth that's coming in that area and the need for the service of those in the first response system. The projections show that our county growing at an unprecedented task and a rate for the next several years. This is the right time for us to prepare for the future and the need is now for this great facility to provide the safety and security for our citizens of Williams County. Again, congratulations Mayor Anderson, County Commission, and Director Jorgson. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, we would not be here today if it wasn't for the support from the commissioners and the county mayor. So without uh, further ado, I introduce uh, Mayor Rogers Anderson. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> Let me give you a snapshot of where we've come since May of 2010. I was sitting there listening to the sheriff talk in May of 2010. All of us remember the devastating flood we had throughout the Middle Tennessee area. And the sheriff and I were stuck on some little road in Old Hillsboro <laughs> Road and water was all around us. Law enforcement was trapped. Emergency services were trapped. We couldn't get from point A to point B. And we both looked at each other at that period of time and said, this does not need to happen in Williamson County again. It's not that we weren't prepared, we couldn't get there. And we had room for improvement and room for growth. And so that journey started with a team of about 45 people. Some of them are in the audience here today to said, that basically said, let's improve the services that we are providing for our citizens here in Williamson County. And the first leg of that was just getting everyone together working as a team, which Oftentimes, as many of you know, if you work in your community or work in your church or maybe a Sunday afternoon uh, family gathering, there's always people that will differ with you. 
but through the efforts of Jack Walton, our commission chairman, and the county commissioners, two of them are here today that are no longer county commissioners, we started on that journey to make this a safer place for all of us in which to work and live and play. Through the efforts of the sheriff and his men and women that provide the law enforcement throughout our community, it's a, it's a safer place. And as you look across the United States and what's happening, the unrest, the discord, and the distrust, I can honestly say, that our law enforcement and our emergency community do a wonderful job for our citizens. Whether you're working city or county, but we're interested in the county side today. Just think what happened a year or so ago. The fair had wrapped up at the end of August. We had a terrible fire on the I-65 at Patesville. One individual lost his life. We couldn't get to the other side of the Ag Center. So we had to work some miracles. The city stepped up, the sheriff stepped up, all of our law enforcement community stepped up. And out of that came a temporary fire service for our people on that side. There's a line over there that says that's the city limits. Your city taxes, your county taxes, we co-mingle those. Oftentimes we have to have that cooperation from the two agencies to make it work. Out of that, once the bridge was opened up through the efforts of TDOT and they hustled through and got that done in about 100 days, out of that came a permanent station that the county and the city of Franklin worked together to pull a permanent station over there for the residents that will see their insurance rates drop significantly. Through these efforts we see here today, as time goes on, we saw a partnership between the owner of this land Drew, we thank you. Thank you very, very much for selling us this land at a reasonable price, but that was also for his community. And to the other residents out here to make it a safer place, it is my, it is my leadership that I am proud to say that makes all of us, it's through the men and women that work under and with us, not through me or through the sheriff, but it's through all of us. You look at the men and women in all their shirts in the back, and the hours they put on and put in. This is a community that takes pride in the things that we do. So thank you to all of the public safety folks, law enforcement folks, and to those folks that put of their time and interest. This will be a safer community because of this. I see the mayor of Thompson Station here, Corey Napier. This will help them. This is in the urban growth boundaries but it is for all of us. So thank you, Bill, for directing this. Mac, to all the men and women, thank you very much. My pleasure to be here. I guess I'll have all of the shovel holders come up. You should know who you are. The um, as they're moving to their their seats, um, tell you a little bit about the facility. It'll have um, you'll notice that there are six bays. There are on one side three double bays um, to fit either two trucks deep or in the future a ladder truck, and then on the other side there are three single bays, and so. Uh, that gives you the opportunity to store it up to nine apparatus um, of different size. Um, inside, there'll be living quarters, both for EMS, um, for live-in volunteer firefighters and a bunk room, um, for other volunteers to stay overnight. There's a small training space, offices for uh, the sheriff's department, for EMS, uh, as well as for the rescue squad um, to, to run out of there. And so... Um, this space, I believe, will serve um, those departments in our community very well. So I'll, uh, I'll have y'all step up to your, your shovels and put your uh, helmets on. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, do you want a different helmet? <laughs> you don't want this one? I'm fine. <laughs> Gray hair shows up underneath one of them. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Bill Jorgensen and let him uh, 
lead us through uh, throwing the first bit of dirt. Well, Mac, I'm going to turn it over to the mayor and let him lead us through throwing the dirt. <laughs> okay, I'll stop this. Let, put your foot on the shovel for you that know how to use the shovel. <laughs> push it down, get you a little dirt under it. Everybody hold it. And I guess the cameras want to see it. You see any red worms, save them, we'll go fishing. <laughs> On the count of three, we're going to kind of gently pitch it out in front of Molly here. One, two, three. Yeah. 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 Let me close this by, by uh, reading one thing. The Fireman's Prayer. When duty calls me, O Lord, wherever flames may rage, give me the strength to save some life, whatever be its age. Help me embrace a little child before it is too late, or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert, and, O oh Lord, guide my every move. For life is so precious, please don't let us lose. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me to guard my every neighbor and protect their property. And if according to thy will that I must give my life, then with thy protecting hand, my Lord, I pray thee, protect my children and my wife. Amen. Thank you all for coming out. They're coffee and donuts. Thanks to uh, our construction partners. And uh, appreciate y'all being here. Welcome to Poets from the Neighborhood. My name is Viraja R. And I'm Thomas John Wells Miller. We hope you'll enjoy the poems we'll be reading today, poems written by your friends and neighbors. New Apple Buds of Spring by a Nanette L. Avery. Mrs. Clampton sat at the little teak table, shrugging her shoulders. She loosened her vocabulary and puckered her brow. Privacy was secrecy from intrusion. Nothing you heard was true. No more lovely shades of writing paper, like a fountain pen. They were gone. Her early intimacy with cooking was a collection of paper recipes. Her passion with the grand piano was as far as the constellations. She was the mistress of disappointments where brave deeds formed dust patterns and low swing chairs told of old stories in the back row of a movie theater. She liked her meals at regular intervals and assured the proportions were satisfactory. She got rid of her wrist watch and foregoes the afternoon teas. Mrs. Clampton sat at the little teak table, having arranged the newly budding flowers. Let me try, she thought, with an uneven disposition and fingered the iPhone like a schoolgirl. 20th Century by Nanette L. Avery. Long ago, there was a simple tale made from silky caterpillars. I captured some in an apron, and when I shook the cloth, they fluttered away. As carefree butterflies, ignoring my calls, as I bid them return, only swirling higher until they were as light as snowflakes, drifting between me and the heavens. Yellow Watermelon by S. R. Lee. One day in a rural county seat, 
a farmer was selling watermelons from a big truck. Dad bought one, which would be yellow when we cut into it. But instead of taking it home to a kitchen and a knife and control eating in the backyard, we walked up behind a barn, up a slope to the edge of the woods, busted that watermelon on the ground and ate out the golden heart, that center section without seeds dripping yellow juice all over our arms, legs, and shirts. It was cold inside that watermelon, even on a hot day. It remains the prime watermelon of my long life, better and more clearly remembered that all those of watermelon seed fight with peers or gracious invitations from neighbors on hot evenings or carefully cut watermelon balls and elegant salads. That yellow watermelon, that afternoon alone with my father teaching me how a melon can always be cool and delicious no matter how hot the summer afternoon. Churn by S. R. Lee. In her kitchen I sat daily. When milk clabbered, hard I pounded. Sweet cream butter formed in thick clots. Float lightly, then I rested. Modern times came, supermarkets. She stopped churning. I grew dusty. In the storeroom, I sat with old, ignored boxes. Still, I waited. Living room now, ornamental, I am cherished, but I sit useless. Margaret French's mother recalls. Margaret, my daughter, you were dear to me then, but now, Try not to bother us. Why did you stand so close to the cliff's edge? You knew that girl had a quick and uncertain temper. I well believe she had done evil when she came home that day alone. But until we could find you, no, no point in speaking. By the time a rabbit hunter found your bones in that hollow log, she was gone and grown, grown and gone working her evil somewhere else. The time for revenge was past. I stored what we found of you in a box under my bed. Don't bother me now. It's all dusty there down under the bed. I'm too stiff and weary to bend low to sweep. Your bones in the box, they rattle at night. When I twist in bed, I might remember. The rest of the time, I have present worries. Grandchildren, washing, feeding the stock. It was so long ago and the bones are old. Sometimes the grandchildren play with your hair. Margaret, you must forget us too. You're murderers known as a ghost around here, but you seem to be resting easy, pushed back under the bed. I guess you don't mind dust on your bones. It was so long ago. This is another poem by S. R. Lee. Ode to the transcribers of family papers. Oh, you who climb to attics and open old scar chests, who read with fascination pale letters from Aunt Bess, who pass the faint old journals and try to find the date of letters without heading and tell of cousin's fate. O oh, readers of the faint page, with water spots, sp split folds, I know your fingers quiver to begin to copy bold. The legends of your family, of secrets long unknown, who came, who went, who never wrote, who found a graveyard bone. Thank you for watching Poets from the Neighborhood. We hope you will join us again soon.